Hello viewers, Super GT here. Super GT is a racing genius. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the secrets of how Super GT has mastered sim racing and real world racing as well. Super GT world class in Forza, world class in Gran Turismo, racing radicals now in real life, going to the Nordschleife and racing a Bilstein M4, racing karts against Lando Norris. I've raced Super GT in karts and in sim racing as well and he pretty consistently gets the better of me. So I've done the analysis here, I've done a deep dive into some really interesting tips and techniques that Super GT uses that really elevate him above the other drivers. Now, this is potentially gonna be the most important sim racing video you ever watch because there's some stuff I'm gonna reveal here that is like driving in another dimension. So we're gonna go through overtaking, we're gonna go through braking, we're gonna go through throttle, we're gonna go through racecraft. Hope you can enjoy it. Let's start here with the braking. Now, Super GT doesn't use the brake really to just slow down the car. And this, I believe, comes from Super GT's background in karting where the brake is really a tool to manipulate the car and to get extra rotation in the cornering phase. Now, you're gonna see here at Dragon Trail Seaside uh, Reverse, have a look at the brake applied here purely to rotate the car, but I'm gonna show you something very, very, very interesting in hairpin corners, in sort of shorter, lower speed corners that really separates Super GT from other drivers. You're gonna see the incredible extra rotations able to get, the better exits compared to other drivers, setting up those overtaking opportunities and putting them under pressure. So here we go at Daytona and have a look at the brake input and left hand side, you can see it goes on the brake full, comes off the brake, then goes back on the brake later on in the cornering phase purely for that rotation he's already got the car slowed down enough to rotate but he wants more rotation have a look here at the international horseshoe off the brake and then back on the brake in the middle and he gets a better reg it almost runs into the back of basic ollie who's another one of my um old teammates actually used to race together with him he also raced in real life you can see again here from the front view have a look at that braking input super gt he has got the car slowed down initially there we go the car slowed down but he gets on the brake again purely to rotate the car and look how much of a better exit he gets than the drivers behind who will just be bleeding off that brake at the international horseshoe full brake gets off the brake and then back on the brake here and gets an incredible exit by manipulating the weight transfer and i think this is why super gt has been able to transition so well into racing real world cars where i can tell you having driven a Ferrari 48 gt3 other cars like that, it is so incredibly difficult to manage the weight transfer. But using the brake like that in a secondary phase in the corner is a real, real, real secret technique. And it's something that I'm trying to practice now. And I'm actually finding it really helpful when shaving off um, tenths of my lap time. Have a look here around the outside again. Using the brake to manipulate the car, he's going to get a bit lucky here with a um, sort of <laughs> a, a push from behind but he was able to go around the outside of that corner where most drivers would not even dare. They would know they're gonna run off the track, but his mastery of using the brake to manipulate the car and to aid the rotation of the car really means he's driving in another dimension. So when you're watching Super GT and he seems to be effortlessly, you know, catching other drivers or overtaking other drivers, that manipulation of the brake is really, really, really key. And I would encourage you to save your replays and have a look at how you're on the brake if you're sim racing or if you've got a um, you know race logic in aurora racing have a look at that as well coming in here again at daytona you can see applying that brake in the middle of the corner there now the next corner you probably won't see it because it's a bit of a uh, faster exit corner you, you don't really care too much about getting that more rotation because you can run so wide on the exit you can see but in the corners where it's pretty constricted in the exit and Super GT wants to accelerate faster, that is what he's doing. Again here, you can see him dancing all over the brake. Very, very, very comfortable in using it as a tool. It's a bit like an instrument that Super GT is playing. But we're going to transition now and have a look at some overtaking as well. This is a race actually where I'm leading, so I was racing Super GT here. But you see Super GT is coming through. And the thing that I've noticed about Super GT, about overtaking, you might be wondering, how is he so good at overtaking? He is very, very, very confident at driving in closed spaces. He will go up the inside of you when you think you have closed it off. Have a look here at Daytona. Somehow he's managed to get himself in a position where he is now ahead coming out of the International Horseshoe where it appeared there was no space. And that is something that naturally comes from karting, 
the Club 100 karting at Super GT, you know, did earlier on in his career, is a really busy karting series. You can see I'm driving on board with me here. Super GT is hunting me down. I'm probably going to try and go defensive, but Super GT is almost certainly going to get the overtake done because, that, frankly, that's what he does. Goes round the outside. I should be able to defend it, but he denies me the space. He's very comfortable at getting alongside and then shepherding you the way that he wants to go. Again, here at the Nordschleife. Oh, sorry, the Nürburgring, I should say. And I'm trying to cover the inside. Super GT is very close to my bumper. Look how close he is. And now he's got a great slipstream. Not afraid to sort of make a little bit of contact in these sims um, if needed. It's all completely fair, obviously. And I might try and go defensive here. What's Super GT going to do? And in fact, I don't go defensive enough. So I'm sort of, I feel like I'm defending the inside. But he's just very comfortable operating in those close quarters. We're back here at Daytona in Gran Turismo 7 this time. Again, going into the hairpin. We know it's a favourite. The other driver ahead doesn't quite go defensive enough. Leads half an opportunity. For a lot of drivers, that would be defensive enough. But not against Super GT. He is supremely confident at operating in those tight spaces. And I've seen it when racing against him. You see here, he's all over the kerb. And now he has. he knows that possession... Is nine tenths of the law when it comes into racing so if you want to learn how to get better at racing then really it's like five aside football compared to 11 aside operating close space here for some reason i don't go defensive he's going to go straight up the inside so for whatever reason in that one i just <laughs> did not defend from super gt but even when i do defend you see it's really tricky this is a race um against key 25 who's not so many races in real life but he's very fast on gran turismo on the console, Super GT going around the outside. And again here, we're going to see some more overtakes. And you can see the two Audis ahead are battling what Super GT, can, Super GT going to do. Shapes to the outside is going to get a very healthy undercut here. Look at that. Look how close he was to the bumper of the car ahead. And somehow he manages to slot in even before really the corners ended. And um, this is this unusual one at Dragon Trail Seaside. I can tell you, 99 out of 100 drivers would not be able to make this stick because going around the outside here when the car is so loaded but he knows he can use the brake there just to pitch in the car and then he does get a little bit lucky we're going to dive back here uh, with super gt in a very close quarter environment i think he went on to win this race you can see i'm p2 in this race i didn't win it and i wanted to show you as a great example of super gt just being really confident in close quarters that's a lot of karting background where you're going three, four wide consistently and um, you don't really have the power to gain a big advantage. You constantly have to battle for your space. You have to be very street smart when it comes to placing the car. Now, I've carted a lot as well, but not as much as Super GT, not as high a level. You can see here again, he's lined that one up on me. Now, I might try and defend this at the Nürburgring, but it almost doesn't matter. He's managed to get alongside and ahead by being very, very, very cheeky. Here at Dragon Trail Seaside again, he goes up the inside at a corner where I can tell you most drivers would not go up the inside at that corner because it's just too risky. And we're going to talk about psychology later on in this video, but this is a real masterclass of overtaking I'm showing you here. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. I do do sim coaching as well. Go to www.sim.doctor and I can help you out. Again here, Super GT, I'm trying to go defensive, but he manages to go up the inside. He knows he has the inside line there. And he knows that might is right and it forces me to the outside. I've got more weight transfer to deal with. I don't have the optimal um, line into the corner and he makes it stick and now I'm falling behind. So it's, it's that five aside sort of mentality, I believe, for Super GT and being really street smart. You can see it here as well. He goes to the inside. Now, some drivers there might not have gone to the inside. They might have stayed in the slip. Then they might have ended up on the outside. But Super GT is on the inside. I'm going to show you in a bit, actually, when he does take the inside. But here he does because he knows he controls the corner now. He holds all the cars, goes a little bit deep into the corner, runs past the apex. And that's because possession, as I said, is nine tenths of the law. Now, this is one where Super GT is just going to play this one. I mean, he, he does me like I look really silly in this clip, I'm afraid. But you can see I'm winning this race. I think it might have been the Olympic Virtual Series or something. It's a pretty big race, and I'm about to win it because it's the last lap. 16 drivers, and Super GT is chasing me down. But surely I'm going to win it. Now, I make half a mistake there on the exit, and Super GT has half a chance to convert this into a win for himself. Now, most drivers here would probably go up the inside. 
But if you have a look at Stupid GT, he knew in that instance to keep the momentum. It's going to be a drag race to the line. And really painfully for me, he's going to win by three hundredths of a second. And that is down to being really, really, really street smart there. And going to the outside, not to the inside, conserving the momentum. Also something that you, you learn during karting. Where you just don't have the power available. So it makes it very hard to defend against Super GT in those instances. Because you know he's comfortable in close quarters. You know he's got the experience. And you know that if you make half a mistake, he's going to capitalise on it. You can see here on board with Super GT chasing me down. Any mistake that I do, he is going to capitalise it. And this is where it comes to psychology as well. When you're racing with someone like Super GT, because you know he's so good, because you know he's gone to the top in, in you know, Forza and Xports, Gran Turismo, real world racing as well, it really piles the pressure on. And I feel like Super GT is someone who finishes his races stronger than he starts. And unfortunately, I can't always say that about myself. You can see at this race here in the lead, I should be able to convert this. But any half mistake, as you can see here, just go a little bit wide. He is finishing stronger than I am. So if you're someone that's able to finish stronger by keeping that mental composure, whatever strategy you're able to come up with in your mind, where you just keep focused, you will have a massive advantage at the end of a race. It's almost like a tyre advantage because the other drivers burn out, as other drivers bottle it, you will be super, super, super strong. We're going to have a look here against Key 25, another driver who looks to be struggling under the pressure of having Super GT behind him, really getting the back end out of that Audi. And again, it's a last lap here. Um, a lot of really fast drivers in this race, World Tour drivers, etc. 10 lap race, 16 drivers. Key 25 this time is in the lead. And for most other drivers, you would think that Key 25 is a favourite here. He's a very fast driver. But because Super GT's in second place, I honestly feel like Super GT is actually in the commanding position. And sometimes you'll know you'll come up against drivers. I like that. But I'm sure Key felt the same thing. This is what I feel when I know Super GT is behind me. Because I'm like, oh my word, I know he can go inside. I know he can go outside. I know he's going to ca capitalise any mistake. And once you have that sort of persona, it really puts other drivers under pressure. And Key 25 now is surely feeling it because Super GT, he can go inside, he can go outside. Again, he chooses the right option, which is to not go over the yellow line, but instead keep that slipstream, go to the high line. He's comfortable in the speed of his car, and he's going to go here and take the victory in this race on the last corner. You know, really, really, really crazy stuff here to be able to do that in a couple of races in a row. Now, as I said, you know, I've raced Super GT for years, and we're going to see a few examples here where I can really talk about what I was feeling. Super GT here, I'm trying to catch him. But again, he's just such a well-rounded driver. He's so insane. good on the brakes. He's very good on the throttle application as well. He's very good in closed quarters. That psychologically, it puts pressure on drivers around. And I might have that effect a little bit when I'm racing drivers around me in Gran Turismo on real life. Possibly, I don't know. But I never really feel like I'm capitalising it. But I know when I'm racing some of the World Tour drivers, you know how much they have in reserve. It really puts you under pressure. It's something you can feel in karting because you can visibly see the drivers around you struggling. But you can also perceive it in sim racing as well as you see the drivers going a little bit wide, losing the back end. And uh, when you see someone overtake you like Super GT done here and you see that his lines are rock solid, you tend to overdrive. And you can see here, I should be able, by the way, in that corner, I should have been able to go up the inside. But for whatever reason, I didn't. I was second guessing it. Again, this clip here. I mean, why on earth am I not defending here? It does not make any sense for me to not defend. And for some reason, I just don't do it. I don't know if I'm overthinking it. I'm like, if I go defensive, you're just going to go around the outside. You can see here, Super GT has gone clean around the outside. Now, I should have a good slipstream here. I should be able to overtake after the death chicane that's coming up. But when you get overtaken by someone who just looks so strong, I can, I'm, I'm telling you, it just causes you to seize up. So sometimes your name can precede you in sim racing. Here we are at this... Uh, I just crumbled in that race. But here we are at the Nürburgring. And I'm in a really nice car for me, which is Perzo RCZ. And you can see me just really struggling, soaring at the wheel, even though I should have the pace in this race especially in the slipstream to catch up but when you see him just get ahead it's very 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 difficult now i want to talk about lines here because uh, we're getting technical again 
have a look at how much track Super GT uses. Look at the outside here, so close to the wall. So now we know he's mastered the brake, we know he's good on the throttle, but the lines are something else. He's actually going to be defending against very well here by Mikey17. But the width of the track is something that Super GT is very comfortable in using. Again, this is something that derives, in my opinion, from karting, where you have to abuse the track limits. In fact, in Club 100 karting, you basically abuse the track limits until you run over a cone. And you get a penalty if you run over the cone. If you don't run over the cone, you don't get a penalty. So it's very sort of um, aggressive the way that you can abuse the track limits and very sort of clear cut. It's the same in sim racing. It's the same in any racing. We see in F1 these days. I mean, look how much he's over the curb there on the outside. Cuts the curb all the way on the inside here. Have a look through Deshikane ahead of me. Just grazing the wall on the outside, all over the curb on the inside. And again, look how close he gets to the wall on the outside there. Much, much, much wider than me. And that's causing me a problem. You see again here, he's going to be super close to the wall on the outside. He grazes it and super aggressive on the inside. Look how much time I've lost there through Deshikane. I've not been following him. I'm going to try and follow him here. Have a look. I try and do the same one and I hit the wall properly and I just lose so much time. So the lines that Super GT takes, real, real, real track width, are honestly something that you should really look at when you're doing your driving. Have a look here at Bathurst. So close to the wall. This is just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Look how incredibly close to the outside here at Bathurst where hitting a wall can be really, really bad news. I know I've done it in iRacing, all over that kerb as well. I mean, crazy stuff. I mean, struggled to get it stopped there. But Super GT, look, the braking, a different dimension by using the brake as an instrument to rotate the car, not just stop the car. The racecraft able to operate in really tight conditions we've seen. Also, that puts psychological pressure on the drivers you race against. That means that he ends up finishing a lot of these races higher up than if... Um, you know, maybe he was racing under a different account. And the wide lines that he takes, really wide lines using all of the track width. Look, this, if this video has helped you, please, please, please leave a like, leave a subscribe. If you want to get in touch about sim racing coaching, you've got me to have a look at your lines in a bespoke way, get in touch, coaching at kirithk.com. But it's been a real pleasure here to go under the analysis here and see why Super GT is such a fast driver. I'll see you, see you next time.